Well, good morning, and thanks for joining us. We're here today to unveil the Senate's version of the two-year operating budget. No legislation is more important to the operation of our state than the budget. And our guiding principles are simple. We want to deliver a balanced, sustainable budget that invests in Ohio's priorities while making our tax rate more competitive, saving for emergencies, and putting hard-earned tax dollars back into the people's hands who earned it. We are continuing today to build on our commitment to fund what matters and return to the taxpayers what's not essential. We plan, uh, the plan will be introduced uh, today uh, and uh, is tomorrow or today, Scott? We're hoping tomorrow. Tomorrow because of the drafting issues uh, in the Finance Committee will do just that. It will do some of the following things. One, it will build on our progress to, towards a more competitive state income tax rate that will attract and retain good, <coughs> high-paying jobs. Our budget reduces Ohio income tax rate by 6.3% across the board, saving taxpayers $1.26 billion over the next few years. It eliminates the entire state tax burden on small businesses for all income up to the first $250,000 and then creates an innovative new flat tax for small businesses above that income tax level. It removes a proposed state income tax on Social Security benefits that was in the governor's and the House version, saving senior citizens more than $260 million. Our net tax reduction in this budget totals more than $1.7 billion. The Senate plan also boosts Ohio's savings account goal, setting aside nearly $2 billion for emergencies while raising the level of the state rainy day funds authorization from 5% to 8.5%. The Senate plan also boosts Ohio savings account, as I mentioned. It contains and reduces health care expenditures by over a billion dollars while making health care services more efficient and improving the outcomes Ohioans deserve. It spends less than any previous state budget plan introduced to date this year. It invests nearly a billion new dollars in students and schools while maintaining consistency and sustainability in the school funding formula. It makes the largest state investment in SSI for higher education in more than eight years while freezing college tuition costs and partnering with our universities and colleges to reduce student costs by 5%. And it restores funding for essential services, such as services for pregnancy care, breast and cervical cancer screenings for women and creates a new police training program. Our plan requires some restructuring of the tax code and we did this by continuing the shift from income taxes to consumption taxes. The Senate plan includes a 40% increase in tobacco tax generating roughly $406 million of which $8 million will be used for the largest investment and healthy cessation efforts since the tobacco settlement. Tax rates on other tobacco products would be raised from 17% to 22.5%. And finally, the Senate plan also reinstates a tax amnesty program, which provides delinquent filers, filers with relief if you want to come forward and settle your obligations with the state. I want to thank Governor Casey and our colleagues in the House for putting us on the path to reach this point. Both the governor and the House had innovative ideas in their budget frameworks. But remember, we went back and started with fiscal year 15 as our benchmark, benchmark location for this budget. Our work is not done, but we are incredibly, incredibly proud of the plan that will go before the Finance Committee tomorrow. We're continuing to build on our commitment to fund what matters and return what isn't essential. 